If we think of God as a principle that underlies everything, then how can a principle, something which is abstract, come down to earth as an avatar? You see, the Hindus will address this issue of avatar in two ways. You can either think of something great and superior descending to earth in this form and say the only way this can happen is because, if you like, the devotion of humanity is so strong it manages somehow to influence the principle. You say, how can that do that? It can do that. So it in a way freezes this principle into a form to come down to earth for the benefit of humanity. So when humanity cries out, this grand principle, which is a principle abstraction, takes on, if you like, a human for a limited form to come down to earth. Now you may surprise, you may think, where do we hear that? The Rig Veda, the Purushokta, it's a beautiful place. It says, Look at the power of this teaching. He says, God has to give up his Godhead or the idea of a principle and take on a limitation to be born on this earth. So he has to give up his Godhead. He has to, in a way, sacrifice. This is what Purushukta is. He's saying the, sacrificing the Purusha. He's sacrificing the God. Sacrificing this God as a principle and taking on a limited human form. This beautiful, infinite principle is prepared to reduce itself and take on a human form and come and interact with us. This is how we define in the Rig Veda the idea of, you know, Purushok, the idea of the ultimate reality becoming visible in the, in, this, in, this, in, this, in, in the human form. And that is why it is called sacrificing. This is an interesting thing. That's the word sacrifice is central in Hindu religion. God has to give up his Godhead to become an avatar, come down. And when God comes down as avatar, he takes on human limitation. So when Ram is on earth and Sita disappears, he cries. He says, how can Brahman, this principle, cry? This is terrible. But when he takes on a limitation, he pays a price as well. So all the emotions that we feel, he feels too. This is one approach. This is philosophic. The second approach is the other way around. It says, really, God doesn't descend down to earth. He never came down to earth anywhere. But some individuals, because this idea of the spirit becomes visible in their lives, they in a way lead a life which shows that they are not just human, but superhuman. So it is not Narayan coming down as Nara, but Nara discovering his identity as Narayan. So it's not that God coming down, we become godly. And this is the, if you like, the conclusion of the He says that, look, it is nice to believe in an avatar. Why don't you become an avatar? You say, oh, this is too much. He says, you recognize your own divinity. If you realize that you are the spark of the divine, you don't have God coming down. It is yourself. So you turn into an avatar. So you see, when you see the film Avatar, in fact, this is what they are doing. <coughs> That's why the Avatar film is borrowed. Look, it has borrowed a lot from Hinduism. You know that? The word Avatar is from Hinduism. Mm -hmm. So they borrowed a lot. In fact, all the Star Wars, you know, they, they borrowed stuff from, you know, the May the Force be with you. They're talking the Mother Goddess, you know, Shakti. That's what I'm talking about. So a lot of these Western thinkers using very innovative styles have already incorporated some of these very powerful ideas of Hinduism in the, in the, in the media, in the entertainment industry. And they, they are, that's why they catch attention. That's why we love Star Wars. It's really the deeper ideas of spirit that is making them exciting and kind of ac accessible to the youth. They like this magic and power and strength. So two ways. You can think of the principle kind of being kind of pulled down by humanity saying, come on, play with us. or the second way is the one I prefer to say that it's really the individual who reaches Godhead because he discovers his identity as spirit, as Atman and from being an ordinary person like the rest of us, he becomes an avatar. In fact, the story of Ramayana, there's a second, <coughs> second story of Ramayana that you perhaps don't know. Not just the ordinary Valmiki Ramayana, Tulsi Ramayana. There's another Ramayana called the Vashishta Ramayana. This talks about Ram, how Ram is in, from an ordinary person become this super personality. To the teachings of Vashishta. Vashishta was teaching him about the secrets of Atman. There's no fighting a demon, you know, and, and killing all these monsters and all that. He was fighting the inner demons and breaking free from his own limitation and discovering the Atman. This is called Maharamayana, in fact, Adhyatma Ramayana. And this is the one that is shows the ex, not coming, God coming down to earth, but human being becoming God. So you see, this, both the answers are applicable. It's a very good question.